Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It's your boy, the SMT. We're going to take a look at a Tutela research uh, report that was just published. Uh, it was, you know, made available online. I want to give a big shout out to Alexis and Nikki T for pointing this out, sending it my way, and uh, sharing this with me. And I thought it was really interesting. Definitely worth our considerations here on the channel. So the Tutela research firm is basically an independent crowdsourced research firm. They utilize, I think, a collection of 300 million users for the research and the data collection. They've got 3,000 different application data sets. They've got 200 plus billion uh, data points that they collect data from. So it's pretty extensive. It's pretty good stuff. I've often used Tutela for lots of different um, research and analytics and network you know, performance reports. So it's been pretty good in my experience. I, I do use them quite a bit uh, in research, but between them and the PC Mag and Washington Post contributions, we have some really interesting findings on 5G. All right, so this in specific is about T-Mobile's 5G network. They didn't mention anything about AT&T or Verizon, but I would assume that most definitely that data would probably look very similar, if not identical. So the first thing that the report suggests, T-Mobile users in 5G-enabled cities that have upgraded 5G devices are unlikely to notice a performance improvement when using typical popular applications most of the time. Uh, so basically what this tells me is that it really doesn't matter if you are connected to 5G or if you're connected to LTE, the way that you use your phone in most cases with most apps, it's not making a difference. There's nothing noticeable. There's nothing worth upgrading for is basically what it's saying. They're saying the exception, though, is during times of congestion, so during peak times, that 5G bands seem to be holding up better. They're a little bit more resilient, and the quality of service kicks in there over LTE because the speeds can be more consistent, more steady, and have more capacity. So I obviously, this is a huge loaded report with lots of data. I did a full breakdown of all the analytics and all the numbers and conclusions on the Patreon page. Uh, you can get a link to the Patreon page down in the description box if you want to become a member and support us there and you want the, the details and my synthesis of everything. But essentially what this tells us is that, you know, it's not really making a huge difference. The second piece also, the percentage of speed tests below 1.5 megabits per second was two times as high or frequent on LTE as it was on 5G. So again, this just confirms that there is a little bit of extra capacity on the 5G side on the T-Mobile network. So um, here's, here's kind of how I'm seeing things. If the only advantage is a little bit of extra capacity when it comes to 5G at this point, that basically means this helps out the T-Mobile 5G home internet user. It probably allows T-Mobile to do a little bit more when it comes to hotspot you know, mobile hotspot plans and stuff like that. Uh, we've seen them upgrade those. The Magenta Max plan could utilize this capacity a little bit with the, um, you know, the increase, the bump to the deep prio threshold data point, as well as with the hotspot and tethering allowance on that plan and the 4K video streaming, you know. Outside of that, I don't really know how important that, you know, 4G LT to 5G upgrade really is based on this. So I'd, I'd actually, I'd love to hear from you guys. And I've got, you know, all these different uh, images from the report here. And I'll, I'll link the story as well in the description box, or I'll pin it here in the video as well. It's, it goes to show you that it's, I don't know. And who knows, maybe it's really not even that it's the 5G that's really making it great. It's just the fact that there are, there's just spectrum on a separate network slice that not many users are on because more, there's more 4G LTE devices connected to the network than there are 5G devices, right? 5G devices have been getting adopted more frequently recently, but it's only a couple years in the game. So that could simply be the case. So we don't even really know if it's 5G per se or if it's just the fact that there are less users on the 5G network bands, right? So this is just something to consider and I thought was interesting. I'd like to hear from you guys. Go ahead and sound off in the comment section below. What do you think of... You know, to tell us research, what do you think of the data? What do you think of the, you know, the takeaways, how I see it, my perceptions? What do you think is the reason that all we're getting is just a little bit of capacity improvement, you know, and there's not really much else changing for us? I'd love to hear what you have to say. Go ahead, sound off the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. 
Let your voice be heard, and we are going to hashtag 5G. Hashtag 5G. If you're a real one and you watch this all the way through, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day, and we'll catch you on the next video. Peace. Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new and have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.